sometimes you have to keep it simple. Don't think, just create. I want quick backgrounds that have killer impact with color and an effortless flow. Since I'm making cards today, I need those backgrounds to pop. And then I need a simple formula with a few key embellishments that'll knock them out of the park. Just five cards. Let's get to it. Hey chickies, welcome. If you're new here, I'm Ingrid. I have a video that is cram packed with all sorts of things for you. Lots of tips. Let's dive right in. Today's video is a celebration. And I, since we're having a party, I kind of thought I need bright, vibrant, impactful backgrounds. And that means rainbows, especially since my good friend Ardeth is one of the people that we are celebrating. So these rainbows are for you, Ardeth. I'm securing a piece of copy paper. It's a three and a half by five and a half piece of copy paper which on top of that, I have a three by five Jelly Arts gel plate. It's just a little baby plate, but it's perfect for card making. And if you're new to uh, working with a gel plate or doing any sort of mono printing with whatever medium, it's bite sized, so it's perfect. You can see I'm brayering out some red acrylic paint. When I was thinking and talking about vibrant backgrounds, acrylic paint is so much better than ink when it comes to really punching you in the face with some amazing color and so that's why I thought you know what let's try this instead of the traditional ink blending you can see I, the piece that I'm using that's not copy paper that's actual cardstock but it's a, it's Nina exact paper so it's not as thick as a regular card making cardstock it's a little bit lighter but it's perfect for mono printing and way cheaper notice how I'm pouncing my brayer up and down I'm lifting it up off the plate that is how you get that effortless look for the colors and since we're gonna do some blending with colors you can see I have orange an orange stripe just slightly higher than where the red was I want those two colors to kind of blend together so we get a little bit of color mixing going on. See, we have a red orange there. Now I'm gonna skip a little strip and go just slightly higher with a, just a teeny bit more orange and we're gonna have more true orange there because remember, we're gonna be working on rainbows. So this is gonna be, now we have the red going through the blend of the colors into the orange and we'll go up higher and I'm gonna speed this up. But I want you to get a good look to see exactly if you just tuck those two corners kind of into the same spot from the sheet that's underneath it, keeping the left or right side in line, it's perfect every single time. It's so easy to do this. You will have so much fun. And the more you start to blend your colors like this, it's really magical. And here's the last color. And wait to see the indigo that it creates from the blue and the purple. Look at that paint, totally impactful. I absolutely love this result and it's perfect for cards doesn't have to be just one at a time. You can see here are three. Now when you have three, you wanna kind of move your brayer up and down, just kind of getting that blend together. And I decided not to do all six colors at once because my brayer is not wide enough to cover the entire uh, plate. If it was, I could do that. So I'm gonna do it just like I did the other colors that you just saw. We have the bottom three and look at that. They're beautiful. I didn't over blend them amongst each other. And then we're gonna do the same with the top three and we still have all seven rainbow colors. Ugh, that indigo gets me every single time. How perfect is that? Now I was able to create these four backgrounds really quickly. We're only going to use three. And if you remember, I have five cards to show you. So I have so much more. Let's get back to it. To get some interest onto some of these backgrounds and to actually create a different one, uh, we're gonna go start off by brayering out some Mars black paint onto our plate. I'm gonna take the Mod Flower stencil. This is my all-time favorite stencil that Catherine Pooler has put out. I love that it's not square on the edges because I can perfectly line it up for a continuous pattern, which is key when you're working with larger gel plates. And this stencil creates some of the coolest uh, patterns. It's very simple triangles that we're gonna pull up right here. But when, then that's the positive part of the image, but when we work with the negative part, on the next background, uh, that is actually 
one of my favorite parts. So that's just a very simple little addition. Now I'm gonna put it right back down onto the same spot and kind of get the edges because I kind of miss those. And because I have that piece of copy paper underneath the plate, it's very easy to just line that back up. This is a lot of fun. And the best part about it is if I make a mistake, I just put it right back and pick up whatever I need to. You can see I have all six colors laid out and what was left on the plate, I let that dry completely. And those are those little triangles. Now I'm gonna switch to another brayer. You don't need to have a second brayer. I just didn't wanna brayer off my ink from the other one just yet because uh, I wanted to kind of come back into it. And you can see they created that magical indigo color again. I'm just gonna go back on top. You don't wanna go back too many times because the more you brayer uh, back and forth, the more you're going to lift off the paint, especially after cleaning it up off the brayer onto a piece of scrap paper. Now wait till you see this pull. This one's my favorite. I love the leftover images. It's gonna have the negative part of the part that was covered by the stencil that I couldn't pull up with the other piece. Wait till you see this pull. Now you can see all that color. Because it's wet, the black part was dried onto the plate, but the wet paint is allowing it to bond with the paper. So I'm able to pull the entire piece from the plate and look at that. Oh, it's so magical. I love this one. That nice little subtle kind of grungy pattern look to it. It's the perfect accent to this piece. And there they are together. Two very different pieces made from the same stencil. We're gonna add more interest. I'm taking some Deco Art Americana paint, and this is Snow White, with some dotting tools. And I've got various styluses in different sizes. And I'm taking a relatively kind of smallish ball. I'm gonna use the same size to dot. Now, of course, the very first time I do this, I, I mess up, but that's okay. Because it's acrylic on acrylic and you know, paint likes to repel paint initially until it dries. So it was very easy to just come in with a damp cloth once I had just kind of wiped the white away and just kind of get rid of most of it. I'm gonna dot right over it so you don't even, honestly, if you were to look at it, you would never even see the mistake. So I thought I'd leave that in for you so that you can see what I do. Uh, even I don't get it right. And just gonna add a very simple pattern. The very first dot is the most pressure and just lighten your pressure as you go and that's going to make the dots go smaller in size. No, you're not gonna watch me do this over and over. This is about the last time. We're gonna speed up through the magic of television and there you have a pattern. I skipped over lots of different triangles. I wasn't trying to be completely deliberate so they're not a perfect pattern, which I actually kind of like. Added some white embossing powder on the corners, matted that. And for the other piece, because it's kind of a little bit more of a, you know, grungy feel, it has its own interest to it. I don't want to do too much to it, but this uh, Dina Wakely gloss spray, this is the best way to add some snowfall or just scattered white drops, stars for uh, skies and galaxies, all sorts of fun stuff. You never even really have to touch the paint, just pull that out and just take a, the handle of a paintbrush, tap that on there. I'm going to actually add some larger splats here and that's pretty much it. Let it dry. I'm just gonna heat set it relatively quickly uh, or you can set it off to the side to dry and that's it. You've got some real interest there. I love how these cards turned out, but we have more. Aren't these backgrounds incredible? I mean, the color is so vibrant. I truly cannot even tell you. The, and they're so super easy to do. And sometimes, like I said in the beginning, it's nice to not have to think and just create. <laughs> so I wanna take this to another level. And so I have a new product that just hit the market that I wanted to play with. And let me tell you, it did not disappoint. Let's check it out. So to get some really cool embellishments that have a different look and some texture, a wow factor, we're gonna use some wow embossing powders, very appropriate. And this is my little nod to my good friend, Jenny, who we're celebrating also on this hop because she is the wow queen. I'm taking this new product, it's called Changers, and I have a video coming that's gonna go a little more in depth on this product because it is very cool. I've got a couple black powders. This one right here is black glint, and you can see it has that glint, that little sparkle to it. 
It's not really sparkle, glint is the perfect word. And I'm gonna take the texture powder. What you wanna do is you wanna use a metal spoon when you're doing this, you wanna have an equal part. So I actually had an eighth of a teaspoon of the black powders, and then I had an eighth of a teaspoon of the texture powder. Shake that up in its own little container, and then we're gonna add this to the bottom part. I have black twinkle in the center, and I have the super fine black regular powder, which is just a gloss embossing powder on the very top. And the reason that I'm doing three different ones is I want to have different ones on the cards. I find that when I emboss sentiments, or not emboss, when I cut out sentiments with my die cutting machine, you know, sometimes it's easier when you're cutting out several to just emboss the whole sheet. And then you have extra little scrap that you can create other little embellishments from, which I ended up doing for this project. I ended up cutting out an H for hello out of the texture powder. And this is the texture right here. I, I went back and forth and added all my leftover texture powder to that. And I have a close up right here. Look at the difference. So you have the shiny gloss on to the right. The middle is the twinkle, which is really sparkly. And that texture, can you see how cool that is? There's nothing like it on the market. This is a very unique product and it really gives a very cool result. The texture one is by far my favorite. And here you see them on the actual finished cards. That one to the right, we just went ahead and split that. It's got a great background stamp by the ton. Absolutely love how these both turned out. For this last one, I wanted to switch up the colors a bit and kind of go with a little bit more of a dreamy feel. The first couple of projects, they had that fun, vibrant party atmosphere you know, that only rainbow colors can give you. But I wanted to have one that maybe used lime, peacock, a little bit of ocean. It has a little bit more of a Monet feeling to it. You know, that peaceful, serene, abstract painterly quality. And honestly, it's perfect for any occasion. How about next I show you some ideas on how to use some supplies that you probably have sitting in a drawer collecting dust. I'll show you three different ways of using them. I'll meet you right here at this video for the first step. 